channel welcome back to the vlog and today you join me I'm on an adventure and I don't even know where I'm going so as I leave my home I have a couple of options I live in the south of Ireland so I can go east or I can go west I can also go north and I can go south but for today we're gonna go either east or west and I'm going out now for sunset and today has been unusually warm and clear day we are on the 5th of September and we've had no clouds in the sky for yesterday and for today now this evening it also seems as if it's going to be cloudless so why would I go taking photos when it's going to be cloudless you may ask well there are news reports that we have some sand from the Sahara that's coming up and it's in the atmosphere and I'm hopeful that with the clear skies I might be able to capture some of that in the air and get a nice red glow even though there is no clouds now it is wishful thinking so my options are as I can go west and shoot into the sun or I can go east and shoot with the sun so I'll see next couple of minutes I suppose really um, because that's when I have to make my decision but it's great to be able to go out and have no real agenda and see what happens so yeah that's what we're going to do let's go I decided to go left in the end and that's east for me and I've come to a place that for those of you that are with the channel for a while you'll recognize it and for those of you that just joined the channel welcome to Ballycotton a place that is so fantastic for photographs you're always guaranteed to get at least some shots a place actually that I had to include when I did my guide for Cork because I have gotten so many different types of photographs from this area I've come here in all different types of conditions and today now when I'm here I'm hopeful fingers crossed that I get some really really nice conditions there's some clouds that are sitting right above the lighthouse at the moment and I'm hoping that they will stay and that they'll catch the light as the sun will set and like I would have said earlier on I'm hoping as well for glimpses of that Sahara sand and dust that's in the higher atmosphere here so if that catches as well I should be in for a treat now what I am going to do is go down here towards the water's edge and I'm going to try and frame up a couple of shots maybe with the rock that you can just see here on the left hand side leading out into the image probably do some long exposures um, while I'm waiting for that light but that's what we're going to do anyway here we're going to go east to Ballycotton for sunset Now, grabbing my first shot here, I've decided to put on my uh, 10 stop and I'm getting a 20 second exposure and that's smoothing out the water in front of me. There's not enough action there really for me to go for a relatively quick, like a half a second shutter speed. But as the tide is coming in, I imagine these waves because every so often I do get some nice waves. So I imagine I'm going to end up changing to a half a second at some point. Nonetheless, for now, what I like about here is the way that the lighthouse will hold on to the sunlight because it is behind you here the sun will set but it's still going to light that even though it's relatively dark here so I just need to be careful of my sky for my highlights but by utilizing this here I think it's a nice shot I'm using the rock that's here kind of leading up I have to make sure that I get separation as well so I'm making sure that I'm quite conscious of my composition to separate the island from the top of the rock that's here and I think within that shot I think it should be nice now with the water coming in as well I have to be very very careful because it is going to come in rather quickly now it's around three hours until sunset or sorry it's a high tide but it's around an hour till sunset so I'll be totally safe as it is but I end up being pushed back anyway by the water 
which then is going to reveal more compositions as the water will hit the rocks that I'm standing on here or where you are in fact as well. So yeah, I'll give you a look at this first shot anyway here now and then we'll see what else I find here while we're waiting for hopefully this light to kick off. I've come perhaps maybe 10 feet uh, from where I shot the last photograph and in fact where I was is now covered in water. Now I'm not wearing my Wellington boots but I am wearing waterproof boots so I am okay but I think I need to be conscious because I'm going to be pushed back rather quickly. But I've come to the other side doing the same thing instead of using the rocks on the left hand side here I'm using the rocks that are on the right hand side and they're leading into the frame with the lighthouse that's been lit up by the setting sun and then that bit of cloud as well which looks like it's lingering as well there but as you can see here with the water coming through less than two minutes ago the area I was stood now would be up over my ankles so I think I'm going to be moving back here and I'll constantly adjust then and as these waves will come through I'm sure they're going to reveal some new compositions. I'll give you a look at this one now and then we're going to head back further and avoid this water as much as possible anyway. Now, something I like to do quite often is to not follow the rules. Now, I had a podcast around two years ago with Maz Peter Everson, and he said something to me which has stuck to me ever since, and I've kind of claimed it as my own. So thanks, Maz, for that inspiration. But it's not rules, they're tools. And normally they recommend that you should utilize the rule of thirds in composition. However, if the scene dictate something completely different then it is okay to bend those rules and similar to how you're composed here the lighthouse is pretty much at the top of the frame and the reason I'm at the top of the frame is because I just want to have the tops of those clouds that are there because there's not much more above that however below me I think I could have a lot more things of interest now what I'm doing is and something I've often said as well is find your shot and then wait for the water to fill the frame. So at the moment here below me, we have pretty much bare rocks. Okay, there's a bit of interest there with some seaweed and some different colors of rocks, but when the water, which is now coming in towards me, reaches that level, it will then fill that with some really, really nice either texture or smoothness or even mystery in relation to that. I might also put on my polarizer to allow me to be able to see down into that water, but right now I don't need to because there is no water here. Now, I'm taking shots as it is right now just to fine tune my composition. I'm still using to my right hand side here the rocks that were in my leading line on the right hand side in the last image, but I've only just come back and over to the right slightly. So now I know that that's right here. What it needs is something to fill the frame. And that can either be like this wave here, if I wait for this and grab that, if that comes through when I'm taking the longer exposure, it will fill that void with some nice movement within the water. Now, as I get closer to the water as well, like I said from the outset, I will probably switch and go to half a second or one second or quarter a second exposure, depending really on the flow of the water. The waves here aren't that big, but if I'm looking out over here, I can see that there are quite large swells. So hopefully I'll get some of those as well will reach me here. And that then I think will be some really, really nice shots. At the moment here, I'm up to 25 seconds and I'm at F11, ISO is at 100. That again will change, but that's what I have for this shot. Anyway, I'll wait now for the water. I'll give you a look at the one without the water first, while we have the glow still on the lighthouse in the distance. And then when a wave comes through, I'll grab that shot and I'll give you a look at that as well.
As I would have predicted, as the water is coming in, it is creating and unveiling new compositions along the way. And just here, there are some rocks that have like a spine that's leading out towards the lighthouse. Now I walked over them earlier on, you might have seen them in a couple of frames in the last shots, but now that the water is coming over them, they actually take on a whole different meaning. Now, as the water is coming in, what I'm hopeful for is that I get some nice smooth water, but just leaving the tops of the water, of the spines, visible. I've gone for a portrait orientation shot, first of all, and now I'm on to my landscape shot. And I'm just keep taking the shots here, even as I'm talking to you here, I'm taking the shot because I don't want to miss it the way the water is coming in. The area that I was in first and foremost now is knee height and I would be getting soaked. But like this right now, the water is coming right up to me and I have to now start retreating even further back. In fact, my bag now is getting pretty close as well. So that's probably gonna to have to go on my back after this shot. And all of these are happening and I haven't even gotten any light yet. So it just goes to show, look, at the floor below you and watch where the water is doing and what it's doing and it will create the compositions for you. I don't know if I like the um, portrait orientation shot, actually that's not bad, um, the portrait orientation shot or the landscape orientation shot. Maybe I'll give you a look at both of them. Let me know in the comments actually which one you prefer but yeah I better hustle here now because I'm taking this shot and seeing my bag is probably around about maybe a foot away from the water so that's going to be on my back but I'll let this one cook. I'll give you a look at them then, and then we'll move back and we'll wait a bit further. anything like me, you know that Ireland is a photographer's dream come true. From our rugged cliffs to our lush countryside, there's something truly magical about this place that just begs to be captured on camera. And that's where my photography location guides come in very handy. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, these guides are a must-have for anyone looking to make the most of their photography journey in Ireland. And what's even more exciting is that for the entire month of September, I'm offering incredible bundle deals on these guides, allowing you to save up to a whopping 35%. Imagine having all the insider tips and hidden gems at your fingertips, ensuring that you capture these breathtaking shots that truly stand out. Each guide is meticulously crafted, featuring an exclusive map, tips and recommendations for the best angles, plus my YouTube videos to give you a taste of the area before you even set off. So here's the deal, folks. If you're planning a photography adventure in Ireland, you won't find a better opportunity than this. These bundle deals are a steal, and they're only available for a limited time. Click on the link in the description to grab your bundle at an incredible discount and make this September a month to remember. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit and wait for my next and probably final composition because what I'm looking at here is you can just see, I don't know if I can make this anyway brighter. Um, oh, I can, yeah. Okay, so over here on the right-hand side, you kind of really, really nice textures on these rocks. It's like an alien landscape. And just down beyond that as well, then just over here, you also have some more. And on the left-hand side over here, you've got this big void. So what I'm hopeful to do to be is to wait for the water to come in, fill all this void, and at the same time, I think it will bounce beautifully off these rocks as it cascades in around me here. This would probably mean that I'll go for my half a second or my one second exposure. So if I bring that uh, exposure time back down again so you can kind of get an idea of um, what I'm talking about here. It will be slightly wider because on the video here it doesn't uh, allow me to be able to get in over this side of the frame. So I've got the whole island in that. But that will be, I think, a really, really nice shot, particularly with the texture on those rocks. And I'm going to have to make sure that I focus stack. So here, for argument's sake, I'm focusing very, very close. Now I'm getting into the center, and then I need to do one as well as it goes out further into infinity and then reaches the lighthouse. But yeah, I think this will be a lovely shot. It's worth my while anyway, waiting to see. So I'm going to relax here now and uh, see if the light kicks off and wait, hopefully, for that water to come in.
Okay, so the water now has started to come in here. I'm starting to get this area anyway closed off by a bit of flow in the water, but I'm not getting it over the rocks fully yet. Now, the light has gone on the lighthouse, so I think the sun is just about to set, if not has set already. No major color, no clouds to catch. So I'm hopeful that when a nice enough wave comes in here, like the one that you see coming in, I'll just be able to fire off a few shots and not get soaked. That's the key. Now, you know, I think my idea, like I say, right, like this right now with the water flowing around these will be very, very nice. I'm hopeful that I can still get a bit of texture in the rocks as well there, that they're not gonna be covered by the water. And I think overall it will be worth the gamble. An absolutely excellent evening uh, out for today. I hope you enjoyed coming along on the journey with me. If it's your first time on the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And if you want to watch another video or another episode, I'd recommend this one here. And I think now, yeah, I'm going to get this shot, but yeah, I recommend this one here. And until the next time, schlange forward.